as states with legal recreational marijuana are creating systems of bureaucracy to control their cannabis markets, a social and economic experiment surrounding the plant is organically taking place in Washington, D.C. When Initiative 71 was passed in 2014, it legalized the possession of up to two ounces of cannabis and the home cultivation of six plants per person. But the sale of cannabis remained illegal. DC is a place with legal recreational cannabis that has no official rules that govern its sale. And yet, a vibrant and competitive recreational marijuana market is growing up. There are some words in Dutch that don't translate well into English. One of them is called Chadof uh, Beleid. Basically, it's an unwritten policy. Initiative 71 basically has allowed the community, the cannabis community, to get started here in the nation's capital. Um, has Initiative 71 allowed us to go full force? No. Uh, is weed legal? No. Um, can I take dabs in public legally? No. Um, can we align ourselves with a profitable market uh, here in the district <coughs> legally? No. While Initiative 71 was limited in what it allowed, a system for accessing recreational cannabis was created nonetheless. I just think it's interesting how every single night in Washington, D.C., there's a marijuana event that's open to the general public you pay a small amount of money to get inside of it. The marijuana selection that you will see in that room is just absolutely incredible. You can buy it for a pretty good price and have a nice time and walk out of that place and go to your car and drive home. That's the thing that I find most interesting. And that's happening every single day in Washington, D.C. Law enforcement, they come in, they're looking around. I don't even know what they're looking for. I don't even think they know what they're looking for. But they've been coming in for two years now looking for something. They still come. So I, I don't know. I don't think they found it yet. There haven't been any arrests. There haven't been any problems. There haven't been any bad people. Nobody's gotten drunk. Um, there haven't been any fights. And, um, and these are... These are events where people have really strong personalities, where, they, where their personality is everything about them. And you have a room full of people with really strong personalities that have the best weed. Everyone's convinced they have the best weed. And um, that's why I'm convinced that, um, that Washington, D.C. has the, the, the funny Dutch word, the Hadoof Belight policy, because um, it's illegal to have a pot party, but it's happening tonight, and it happened yesterday. It's illegal to charge ticket prices to a marijuana event. It's completely illegal. Uh, it's illegal to have marijuana in a restaurant that serves food where there's edibles. All of these things, there's so many illegal things happening at the exact same time, yet there hasn't been one arrest. We all knew right from jump that there was going to be a significant amount of uh, showing the love. <laughs> yeah, you know, just give. There was going to be a lot of gifting going on of weed and cash. You know, I, I think uh, everybody over the last few years has gotten much bolder. Uh, some blackberry banana Kush. I got some right here. I'm doing 60 and 8th on those and the cookies have a, we make them with concentrates um, there's 100 milligrams of THC in each cookie um, we do them 10 uh, 1 for 10 3 for 25 or I got big jars at 13 of them I do for 80 I think I was the first person to post any weed pics of like the type of weed I would allegedly sell if I were that kind of guy <laughs> you know so the, but now you go on there I mean there's hundreds of them while marijuana money is still illegal under the law, the lack of enforcement has economically empowered people in D.C.'s most impoverished neighborhoods. I've seen some things happen in parts of D.C. that I, I've never seen before, and, and they're on the other side of the Anacostia. 
and you know they're close to Oxon Hill, but it's in Washington D.C. and these are neighborhoods, you know, that are really challenged right now. And you could get shot, um, but a lot of my customers live there, and I'm helping them grow marijuana in their basements, and they're selling it for profit in their own neighborhood. So they grow the marijuana in their house. People come to their house to buy their marijuana. They hope that uh, you know that type of business can go on for years, and so far it seems to be. The extra couple thousand dollars that some of them are making each month in growing and selling the marijuana is life-changing money. You know, we really have the best situation in the whole country. I mean, as far as I can tell, you know, city council has been, has kind of let it be known as long as you don't make a problem, there won't be a problem. They kind of turned a, a, a reasonable blind eye to it. Uh, just simply because, you know, it, it seems to be working. They've given us plenty of room to, to do a nice experiment here and see what happens. I'm curious to see how it all plays out. I think there may be a chance that marijuana is de facto legal in Washington, D.C. right now. That it's at the end of March right now, 2017, and marijuana is legal for growing and selling, you just haven't realized it yet.